Hello! Today I want to talk about creating a campaign or even a complete campaign world, writing it yourself. Writing a campaign, coming up with your own unique campaign world can be a challenge. For some, the perceived amount of work required is so much it's overwhelming and they don't even start. Others do start writing and they keep writing and writing and never feel that they have enough prepared to actually start playing. So they never do anything with the work. But many an experienced GM will tell you that you don't actually need a lot of world building to get started playing. But don't take it from me, take it from Matthew Murtha. I just built Stillben. Yeah. It was a swamp town for a one shot and I've got nothing more beyond like some basic facets of the town, a couple of inn names, a couple of road names, a couple of factions, and a general like through line, a one shot we can play in like six hours at home on a weekend. Amazing. And that was it. Now, it, was, it wasn't even in Exandria. There was no name for the world. It was just a town. That's part of a great, very insightful discussion, by the way. I'll leave a link up here. This method of creating the campaign world as you play, as you go, is sometimes called spiraling world building or how I like to call my own version of it tree world building. It is a method of creating your campaign world as you go along so you don't have to put in the work up front and can distribute it throughout the whole run of the campaign. Allow me to explain the concept and then give you a few tips on how to actually implement that in your game. You start with the tree trunk. That is the imminent world you need to run your first game, your first adventure. And that might be as little as a single village, a single dungeon and a single quest giving NPC. Don't worry about backstory and the rest of the world yet. That might be the roots the tree is standing on. But even a giant tree sprouts from a single small seed. From this first session, you build outward. As the party explores the world, the tree will grow. Add new places and NPCs whenever, wherever you need them. These will form the twigs and leaves of the crown of your tree. The branch outward, wherever the party is headed. Also, Write down, take note of everything that has happened, of every piece of backstory that you have come up with. These will form the roots of your world that the tree is standing on. These are the foundations you can reference to hold up the trunk of your campaign. And over several adventures, through the course of seasons and years, the tree will grow spreading branches far and wide and putting down deep roots. And through both of these, the trunk will become thicker. And the adventures you run will feel like they are part of something bigger. So, how do you actually implement this in your game? Here are three rules for you to follow or ignore as you see fit. Rule number one. When preparing an adventure, Think about the imminent, the past and the future. You want to spend about 80% of your prep time on the imminent, on what your party is likely to encounter in the next gaming session, be it locations, NPCs or encounters. These are the branches that your adventure is standing on. So they need to be good and thick. But you also need to think back, so that during the adventure you can give glimpses of the past. About 10% of your prep time should be spent on history and backstory. Again, focus on what your PCs are likely to encounter. Like, how did the castle they are explore fell into ruin and why? Or why the bandits haunting the woods are half bestial madman. These glimpses of the past are your roots. They give nutrients and water to your branches. Lastly, 
you need to prepare for the future. You need to hint at what is to come in your campaign. Another 10% of your prep time should be spent on preparing what your party will likely encounter a few sessions down the line. That could, for example, be the boss of the bandits that the party is encountering in the current session. As the surviving bandits flee from the party, they will shake their fists at them and call out, The shadow will know of this! Or maybe the party hears the first rumors of something terrible that is about to happen or that is happening far away. Like cattle gone missing in the outmost pastures, or travelers going to a faraway village just vanishing. These hints are the growing twigs and leaves of your tree. They show the party what is further up the tree, where they might go and what they might encounter. Let me try to put this into more practical terms. If you are using the method of game preparation from Return of the Lazy Dungeon Masters and you're writing down 10 secrets for each session, 8 of these secrets should be for the imminent game of what is about to happen. One or two should be for backstory, for history, for hints of the past, and again, one or two should be for future events about hints that are yet to come. All the NPCs and locations you prepare should be for the imminent game. There's no use in elaborating and preparing on NPCs and locations that the party might never encounter. Second, when preparing the adventure, after the gaming session, and even during the gaming session, you have to take down notes. You need to keep track of the past and future you have hinted at, so that you can use that information when preparing the imminent for an upcoming gaming session. Certainly, the future is something that will become the present at some point, but even the past has a habit of catching up with you. And if you use this 20% of world building that you have only hinted at in past adventures when coming up with new adventures and elaborate on that, then it will seem to the party like that had always been the plan. That part of the world history had always been there. Also, take note about what your players are discussing during a game and ask them after each gaming session what their characters want to do next. That way you know what part of the gaming world they are interested in and you know what you need to prepare for the next session. And you have to organize these notes to make them easy to reference and use even during a gaming session. So have a folder for your NPCs, have a folder for your locations. And as you come up with more secrets and facts about these, note them down in the corresponding files and entries in these folders. There's even specialized software that you can use to help you with that task. For example, Campfire or World Anvil. I personally just use a well-organized folder structure and text files and other people just have a loose collection of notes. Do whatever feels comfortable and easy for you to use. Maybe try out a mind map. My father swears by them. And with a digital mind mapping software, you can add ever more smaller and finer details in the outmost branches. You could even put entire pictures, entire videos in there and then hyperlink and cross-reference it all. And when using this mind mapping technique for notes, the tree structure of your campaign becomes visually obvious. Third, now this could be second, but I think that the note-taking is more important than this. So third, scatter hints about a larger world during the game. Use the 20% of your prep time for the past and future 
and put out these secrets to the players during the game, but also don't be afraid to come up with hints for the larger world during the game on the spot. One thing with tree world building, it is unlikely that whatever you have improvised will clash with your existing game world, because there is not that much it can clash with. Also, you don't have to elaborate on these hints if you don't like them. It is likely that the players will not latch on to these hints or even remember them until you bring them up in a later session. And if by chance they do latch on to these obscure hints, then at least you know that the players find these interesting. But by hinting at the larger world, and of course taking notes so you can elaborate on those hints later, it will feel to the players like the larger world has always existed and they just didn't yet know about it. For example, you could let the players find the hilt of a broken sword, of masterfully craftsmanship and strange elaborate design with faint remnants of a once powerful enchantment. And at the point when you are preparing the adventure, that is actually all you have to come up with. But you will tell your players, you know, that is all you can make out at the moment. If you want to know more about this sword hilt, then you have to take it to a blacksmith or an enchanter that is knowledgeable about these things. The PCs will take that sword hilt with them and you take down a note that you have given them this item. And then, a few adventures down the line maybe, the players will take that sword hilt to a blacksmith and by then either you have come up with more information or you make up more information on the spot. Like, oh, it's of ancient make, something that has been spell forged. That is a technique that has been forgotten since the cataclysm. I'm not sure I personally could repair it, even if I had the rest of the blade. And then, even later, you let them find the remains of an ancient blade, something that is still sharp even after spending centuries or millennia in a deep, damp dungeon. And even later in the campaign, the characters will find a spell forge and a master blacksmith who can tell them the story about the machine slaying blades of the fallen Finalian Empire that was overrun by their own creations. And if they can bring him a sack of special deep earth coal from the lost mines, he can reforge that blade for them. Extra points if you also introduced a machine monster and the PCs need that blade to slay it. Maybe even an entire army of machine monsters let loose from an ancient fault by the main antagonist of your campaign. Maybe he even hired the PCs to unlock that vault for him. And if you are wondering, that is pretty much the Star Razor from Critical Role Campaign 2. And either Matthew Mercer had all of that stuff prepared, or he came up with it as the campaign went along. If you do your hinting, note-taking and preparing and elaborating right, then the players will never know the difference. And really, that's all. Think of the imminent, the past and the future when preparing. Take diligent notes and prepare them for reference. Make hints about a greater world and follow up on these hints later. This way, the tree of your campaign will grow throughout the game and you will never feel overwhelmed by the amount of work required. If you've liked this video, then 
not only consider liking and subscribing to my channel, but please share it around. These videos, these instructional videos, are a lot more work to make than a simple review, but they usually only get a fraction of the views. So if you could share this around, it would help the channel and me out greatly. Thank you. Until next time, and goodbye.